Here's my custom Remington 870 Express. I'm running the Mesa Tactical Urbino stock with the pistol grip. Limb saver recoil pad with the cheek riser. This is, I believe, a GG and G or SJ Hardware um, oversized safety. I'm also running a Ergo 3 tri rail for the 870, so it gives you three Picatinny rails on each side. And when you run it with a grip or anything like that, uh, it makes it look really nice and, and compact and sleek. This is a Nordix Components barrel clamp. Um, I like how strong it is compared to the stock one. Um, this is also a three inch uh, Remington extension. Uh, this gun comes with a factory two, which will come flush right about here. And then if you run the brake, it kind of extends past the brake. So I decided to try a three shot to give me a full flush magazine look um, and to get an extra round in the chamber, which or a round in the tube, which is pretty cool. So this is a uh, seven plus one. So I get seven in the tube plus one in the chamber. Um, I run a mag pull sling on there. And then now the fancy stuff. So this is a fully coated nickel or titanium nitride bolt. And uh, I had the work done by K&M Blasting, and uh, it was a really good price. I got my whole bolt covered. So I have the bolt, I have the locking lug, and I have the firing pin, and I have the and I have the slide block, the little piece of metal that sits on your slide. Um, I was gonna get the. Uh, the rails coated, but it was just a little bit more money than I wanted to spend just for the rails and just for a look. On the other side of the shotgun, I'm running uh, a GG and G slanted six shot side saddle, and also the Mesa Tactical six shell um, attachment for the stock. Um, so I run all my buckshot here, and then I run some slugs on the stock there, and it kind of counterbalances it. Um, I'm also running a TRL uh, one just on the Picatinny rail right there, as you see, so it's nice and, uh, nice and, nice and flush. And then what's really cool is this Halasun. This is the 503C, which is a solar panel powered red dot and uh, it actually runs, I don't know if we'll see it in there, but it actually runs uh, the circle dot. And it's mounted on the Adrias Industries co-witness ready mount. So it actually comes with a peep, you mount your red dot, and it co-witnesses with your front sight, which is pretty awesome. I will say that this mount was made for the aim point micro. So the actual aim point, that's what this rail or this mount was designed around. It will fit anything that mounts to the T1 mount, which is pretty much any micro red dot. Um, but you may find your co-witness to be different than what was designed. Um, this actually, because it runs the battery tray there, so you get your solar panel and you get battery power, um, in there it actually brings its height up a little bit, so I don't get a full co-witness. Um, what I actually get is a very, very um, like lower thirds co-witness, where uh, I can use the sights through the very bottom of this site and it's definitely usable in an emergency so I'm not gonna say I'm gonna run my sights if I wanted to like oh I don't want to use the red dot and blah 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 but if you couldn't use the red dot or the red dot broke you could run the sights um, you could actually adjust the cheek riser a little bit lower to get you a better sight picture but you could run the sights with this you're, you're able to see clearly through um, that with this setup. Um, I'm sure if you used another micro dot like the primary arms, 
I've heard works good with this, this company said, um, among other micro dots. I'm sure you can get the Bushnells and I bet you the Bushnells would look really good because um, anything that doesn't run a battery here will probably be lower and you'll get something that runs a battery on the side. Uh, that would probably work a lot better. But I really wanted to get um, the Halosun because it runs the solar power powered and I just think that's awesome because then you technically never need to use your uh, use your sights here. So that is my custom Remington 870 here with the pistol grip. I've also run this with the Magpul grip and I think the Magpul grip and foreign. I like the Magpul foreign a lot, but it's kind of goofy if you want to run something like that. Um, but I had the Magpul grip, and the one thing I didn't like about the Magpul stock is the, the the stock is so wide. It's so flat. It's so wide. And I was running a high cheek rise to run an optic, and it was just kind of. I just kind of was just. I, I got tired of it, but the grip wise, um, I almost preferred over the pistol grip, but I wanted to try a pistol grip and see uh, how that works. And uh, so yeah, that's my Remington 870. Oh, I'm also running in here a, uh, let's see if we can see it. See that green, there we go. A green Durlin follower with a piggyback tail and that's the type three, I believe they call it. Um, follower from S&J Hardware. It's Durlin, it never breaks down, it never wears, it's super slick, and uh, it's cool green color. It's got a hollow point so you can actually see your finger. Um, it actually has a little pigtail carrier in there so that you don't get any spring binding. And um, I, I run it in all my shotguns. I run one of these in my 870 and I run one of these in my 930. And uh, yeah, that's well, that's it, just got done zeroing this uh, red dot and it's awesome, I, uh, I love it. The 503C's got your power buttons here, got your solar cell here, and then those are your turrets for adjustment, battery power down there, and then this runs the circle dot, and uh, looks badass. And this is also a Valkortsen's uh, extractor. It's like a $25 extractor made from hardened D2 steel and not the junky MIM metal. Um, you can also get by by getting the Police Models extractor, which is a better uh, extractor. But I bought some stuff at Midway and I saw this for $25 and I said, hey, if I buy it once and it never wears and it never breaks, then you know I guess it'll be worth it in the long run. I've also polished my inside of my... Uh, inside of my barrel here. I was getting a lot of bird shot getting stuck inside the chamber because of the micro grooves inside a lot of 870s. They don't really finish up the polishing in there. And the way you can check if you have an 870 is um, run your fingernail off the back side of it and you'll see these little grooves because they're not really polished down and you can actually take a little bit of sandpaper and polish it out. You could take, um, I used a Dremel with a wheel and metal polish and that way I wasn't really taking off any material more than I thought and then I was able to really buff it up really good and I've never had any extracting issues with uh, cheapo Walmart bird shot but I was getting a lot of um, extractors sticking with the shell over expanding in the chamber and then when you go to pull it out the low brass would dig into a hook because you're pulling it on one end and it's going to make the shell tilt inside and then it was hooking on the other end so you're getting this jammed and you have to bang your buttstock and it's a pain in the butt but that is my Pretty sweet Remington 870.